Amber Palm is insanely good for how little it's used competitively. While it is frail, it does have a solid base 100 attack, along with 115 speed, which makes it faster than a lot of threats. What makes it extremely useful is its ability Technician, which boosts any move that is 60 power or less by 50%. This pairs super well with Fake Out, which both has priority and always flinches the opponent. Normally 40 power, Technician boosts this to 60 and then becomes a 90 power move after stab. Also, since Double Hit is a 35 power move that hits twice, Technician boosts each hit, making it essentially around 150 power move after stab as well. With coverage and things like Knock Off and the ability to fast pivot with U-Turn, Ampapalm has always been extremely strong and honestly very annoying to deal with. Alright look, Ambipom has got to be one of the most well-rounded normal types. This thing, it's literally been doing the same thing for over 15 years and it still does it extremely well. It's one of the easiest mons to slap on a team. It's, uh, it's pretty versatile and it always seems to come in pretty clutch. This thing's hands are in fact rated E for everyone and it's just a really fun Pokemon to use. Hey, it turns out only half the people that watch these videos are subscribed, so go ahead and double check for me and let's get into the video. All right, so my cyberspace cowboy opponent is gonna lead off with the Veluza. Not generally the guy you like to see. It doesn't matter if you're in the middle of the damn ocean or in a Wi-Fi battle. This thing as a lead is kind of scary because it means it can start going for that fillet away and get scary after cutting himself up. So they do actually turn one fillet away, which I'm kind of fine with as Bastiodon is guaranteed to live an attack with Sturdy. I can then do some cut berry shenanigans and try to weaken this thing and it does have to take a lot of damage by uh, literally slicing his damn body in half. So I set up the Stealth Rock. I want to take this opportunity just to guarantee those are able to stay up. And if there's anybody that wants to deal with this, it's kind of Bastiodon, except I can only really hit it neutrally with an Earthquake. And it turns out they're actually just going to go for the Substitute here. That's going to activate a Citrus Berry. This thing's really going through it, man. Cutting himself up, healing up with a snack, and also getting freaking Earthquake. So the Quake is going to be able to take care of the Substitute. And the main goal at this point is to not get swept by this damn fish. With the Filet Away, it is extremely scary, but I do feel like I have some threats in the back to um, at least try to stop this thing in its track. So it can now go for the Aqua Cutter. Of course, Donathan, the big Don, is able to live with that Sturdy and then fire off uh, another Earthquake here. Doesn't do much. And literally, this Bastion doesn't do anything to anybody, but what I can do is have myself a nice little mid-turn snack, activate that Custat Berry, allows me to go faster than I normally would, and one more Earthquake actually does take care of it. So that is how you just slowly pick apart a damn fish. So with that thing down, the bad news is now Bastiodon is kind of in a situation where I'm a little bit of a sitting duck in front of some potential setup. So they decide to now go into the Halucha, and Halucha generally is going to be like an unburdened set, and I do imagine they're going to try to uh, get a little sweep going with this thing as well. I'm afraid of Halucha, especially because now they go for the, uh, the Encore. That's going to lock me into the Earthquake, and that essentially tells me that now this thing is surely going to try to take this opportunity to go for a Swords Dance. I'm essentially forced to switch here, and I decide I'm going to go into Ambipom. It is a risky maneuver, obviously, considering they could just close combat, but if I know a Halucha like I think I do, this thing is surely going to take this opportunity to Swords Dance, and that's exactly what they do. So, with that Swords Dance set up, the main thing that is scary about Halucha is when it's able to, you know, get its Unburdened ability. It's going to use up an item, likely a lot of the time going to be like a White Herb after a close combat, but at least I can take this to, chance to go for a nice little Fake Out with the Ambipom, and I do actually get a Critical Hit, which is super nice, because that knocks it into range. Right, to be easily taken care of. So I obviously, Halucha is actually naturally faster than the Ambipom, so I can't really risk staying in here knowing that they're gonna close combat. I can then just switch back into the old shield face and uh, just get punched right between the damn eyes. And of course at one HP, it's not gonna feel good regardless. But uh, that is a nice little sack switch for me just because now with this thing going down, as they do lower their stats with the close combat, it is of course now gonna activate the white herb item. So that's a lot of the time what you're gonna see with Halucha. It now has its speed doubled and this thing is zooming about fast as hell. Literally the fastest damn Halucha alive. So luckily I in fact have the fastest hands alive and I don't care how quick you are, you're not faster than these monkey hands. They kind of they, they be looking fat over the, they, they move quick is what I'm trying to say. Cause I can now just go for uh, the fake out here and essentially just neutralize the Halucha, which is quite scary. So the good news is while they are kind of forced to switch here, knowing that a fake out takes care of it, I'm totally fine with that because that means that that, uh, 
Alucha did in fact use up its Unburden, it now no longer has the ability to use up its item, and that should be pretty fine. So they do make the switch into the Skeledurge, which I am fine with because it takes that 25% from the Stealth Rock, and then now knowing that I can live any attack this thing throws at me, I can actually go for the knockoff. Skeledurge is always just a uh, big fat clown that never wants to die, and so getting rid of that Assault Vest is going to make my life a whole lot easier, and also we do see that um, this thing does go for that Torch Song. So. While Krusty the Clown is chilling at plus one special attack, I can now just go for U-turn for just a little extra uh, chip there and save Ambipom in the back pocket for later. As I kind of have a good answer to the Skeledurge with the Assault Vest Blastoise. I, I really like having uh, a Blastoise on the squad that is kind of a different role other than Shell Smash because a lot of the, more often than not, people kind of respect this as like a Shell Smash set and they have to you know, try to be afraid of a sweep, when in general it's not going to happen. This thing's just here. As an assault vest, I can take special attacks literally insanely nicely. I'm about thick as hell out here. And I can also outspeed this thing and finish it with a surf, which is real nice. See, I'm going surf over hydro pump. Just because this uh, Blastoise has proven that he has shit eyesight. He never lands a hydro pump. So we're going surf instead. Calabunga. Anyway. Now, taking out the Skeledurge is really nice because that's a big defensive threat out of the way. But they now are able to go into the Metagross. So... The problem with Metagross is you never really know exactly what kind of set this thing's going to be. So I go for the flip turn there just because Blastoise is kind of just uh, not going to be able to pressure it too much. Especially because I'm built to take special attacks. So I decide to go into the Bruxish here. Now, Ugly Ass Fish is going to actually end up taking a Trailblaze. And that's what I mean. You never really know what this thing is going to do. It has a lot of kind of tools. And the Trailblaze is going to allow it to be fast. But... Luckily not faster than the Choice Scarf Bruxish, so I'm able to now take a bite out of this thing. Honestly kind of thought the Crunch was going to be able to knock it out there, but instead it barely lives and also activates the Weakness Policy. So, as they finish me off with a Trailblaze, this damn Xbox is extremely scary. It's now sitting at plus two speed, it also has the Weakness Policy boost, and I am in danger. So, trying to figure out how to not get swept by this thing, I decide Ambipom's kind of Looking like my best answer here. So, of course, this thing is not quite in range for a fake out to be able to knock it out. But what I can do is just go for it regardless. Fake out is going to probably be a two hit KO here. And while this thing is looking extremely scary in setup, I get that fake out off and it is looking like the next one should be able to kill it. So, bad news is I now have to basically sack a Pokemon. So, I decide to go into Blastoise. It kind of looked like the least useful uh, Mon at this point. It did my job taking care of the Skeledurge. And now I just decide to basically bring in the turtle, and uh, I actually do live the Trailblaze, which is fun. But uh, this thing is running mock speed at this point. It's got plus three speed, it decides to go for another one, brings it to plus four, and uh, that does take care of the Blastoise. But that is fine, that's exactly what we needed to do with the sack here. And Blastoise is going to now open up the door to bring right back in Ambipom. This thing, is tr truly, this monkey is like having a fantastic insurance policy. I can just come in and fake out priority and just uh, just slowly chip away at the opponent's mental. <laughs> so I come back in, I can go for another fake out. Luckily that does finish off the Metagross. Thank God for that chip I was able to get with the crunch on Bruxish or else that uh, definitely would have resulted in me getting destroyed by a, uh, a Metagross. So now they're able to get a revenge switch. They go back into the Halucha. Uh, sadly, of course, this thing is faster while it doesn't have its own burden. It is pretty damn scary. So the only way that I can really take this thing out is just conserving the Ambipom. Now, they, still ha they do have three Pokemon left. It's going to be this Halucha. They have a Scizor in the back and a Haxorus. All with sweet potential and very scary squad. So they go for the close combat here as I bring in the Mandibuzz. And I really was trying to find a good time to bring this thing in to get hit by a physical attack because that's going to activate my weak armor ability. And while it does drop our defense, it is going to go ahead and give me plus two speed which should allow this Mandibuzz to actually outspeed the Halucha, which is kind of wild. So I do actually outspeed, and as I don't want to miss an Air Slash, I decide to go for that Dark Pulse that is going to be able to pick off uh, the few HP Buddy had left. And um, listen, weak armor Mandibuzz kind of goes crazy, because as they go into Scizor here, this thing's probably feeling pretty safe. Mandibuzz is almost never a special attacker, and Steel types look pretty solid, except for when you remember I do, in fact, <laughs> have access to Heat Wave, and I'm able to outspeed. They do not Bullet Punch, and uh, the Heat Wave takes care of it. I imagine they probably Swords Dance there, but that is amazing getting rid of that Scizor, because that's kind of the uh, one of the bigger threats I'm worried about. So the final Pokemon is actually going to be the Haxorus, which, again, is extremely scary, because this thing 
can dragon dance here, and I know that without see, a weakness policy boost or a nasty plot, I'm not going to be able to do a whole lot to this thing. So the goal at this point is this. I can go for a Dark Pulse knowing I can outspeed, get a nice little chunk here, and it might come down to Ambipom bailing my ass out. So they do Dragon Dance as we kind of expect, and uh, late game Haxorus is honestly like the best Dragon Dancer in the damn game, because it seems to always be able to take an attack. Uh, the good news is, however, with my weak armor, I should actually still be faster than the Haxorus uh, at plus one, since I'm at plus two, and I am max speed. So they're actually going to now go ahead and bust out the latest game, Terra, and it is going to be the Terra Steel. So Terra Steel, while it, it doesn't really affect the matchup on the Mandibuzz unless I click the Heat Wave, it just mostly is going to make it scary for now my Fake Out. But the Dark Pulse, I am able to actually come through and outspeed, put it in range to where I should be able to finish it off. And while the Iron Head is going to clutch out the, uh, the kill on the Mandibuzz, Luckily, the most amazing monkey of all time comes in, and uh, it still does not matter how fast you are, because you are not faster than these hands, goddammit. I can come in, and a fake out should be able to uh, finish the game. So the Terra Steel was one thing I was very worried about in this situation, but uh, luckily, Mandibuzz did exactly what it needed to do in bringing it down to range, and that's going to take care of it. So that is, honestly, the true power of Ambipom. This thing... If you can keep it alive, you can truly just be so annoying with this mod, and it's very fun to use. So that's going to be the end of Battle 1. Now, of course, there is still some monkey slapping fun to be had, so that brings us into Battle 2. So this match is an extremely good one, and going up against a very scary team as well. They have Sun Support with the Torkoal, they have the Venusaur with the Chlorophyll, Typhlosion can be very scary with eruptions in the sun, and uh, some annoying Pokemon as well. Now, let's go ahead and jump into it. Alright, so my opponent is just going to go ahead and lead off with the Torkoal, and I'm going to toss out the Gastrodon. So, East Cargo over here is in a situation where they could Solar Beam me. Uh, in general, I want to set this thing out to try to get some damage off on the Turtle. I know that their win condition is going to be things like the Venusaur taking advantage of the Sun, and as I go for the Earth Power, it is just barely able to live. And good news for me is that they actually end up going for the Rapid Spin. They likely just expected me to click Stealth Rock turn 1 spin them away and just be right back at square one but that is actually perfect because even at plus one this turtle about slow as hell and i know i can outspeed i kind of expect them to switch so my plan was to set up the stealth rock here and then torkoal can no longer come in and uh it basically just dies to stealth rock and uh that would be extremely nice because limiting the sun is kind of the main goal at this point so they actually take this opportunity to set up the stealth rock of their own and I'm like, well, I'm just going to go for a little Surf here. It kills the Torkoal if they stay in. It also covers for a switch into the Talon Flame. And they are going to end up going ahead and switching right into the Talon Lame. So this thing comes in. It does not take the Stealth Rock chip. Tells me it is going to be wearing boots. And it's also potentially going to be Defog. So while I want to try to maintain my Stealth Rock here, um, I mean, kind of want to scout and see what this wants to do. So they do actually end up going for the Will-O-Wisp. They... Probably expect that I switch here, but honestly, Gastrodon kind of walls this thing. And Surf, even in the sun, is going to be able to slowly you know, whittle this thing down. So, still don't really know much about what this wants to do. I imagine it's like Tailwind, some defog action, um, and uh, just kind of want to scout here. So, I decide now to just go for some spikes, as they're actually just going to roost. That would have been an extremely satisfying time to go for uh, an Earth Power. If you do catch the opposing Pokemon on a roost turn and go for a ground move, it does actually hit them, because they touched the ground and I didn't go for it. It really did not expect the roost there, but it's good to kind of see what this thing old buddy's working with. So, Gastrodon, while being burnt, it, it isn't really changing much. I'm still just kind of being the thickest damn slug out here, and um, I do look pretty useful against anything other than the Venusaur. So, considering a switch here, I decide, you know, we know what this thing wants to do. It's probably going to click Defog here, especially since I had gone for the spikes. So, I do have a plan, and that is to go into the Haxorus here. So, while Haxorus is threatened by this thing potentially going for a Will-O-Wisp, I do have a plan. So, I come in and I break the mold, and they do in fact go for that Defog. So that gets rid of this Stealth Rock on both sides along with my Spikes, and I am kind of fine with that. Obviously, it would have been really nice to limit the Torkoal Sun, but uh, it is what it is. Because now, I'm feeling like I'm in a position to try to take advantage of this Talon Flame. Now, I know that they're gonna go for the Will-O-Wisp. Of course, they do outspeed, and they are going to burn me, which generally is real bad for Haxorus, except for the fact that I kind of tried to bait that and knowing that I have the, the Lumberry able to go ahead and cure that burn. Not only that, but also gives me the free Dragon Dance 
and at plus one speed, I can definitely outspeed this Talon Flame, and a Dragon Claw should be able to take care of it. So I do have a little bit of a decision to make, knowing that they do have potential switch ins here. I decide to make the safe play. It's too early to try to go for crazy predictions. I need this thing dead, and I can't afford to be Will O Wisp again. So I go for the Dragon Claw. But my opponent is going to make a nice play and go into the Whimsicott. Obviously, does not get affected by the Dragon Claw, and that is annoying. I really was so close to clicking Poison Jab there, I just really did not think they were going to do it. So, unfortunately for me, they are in fact going to Prankster Encore my ass, and now I'm stuck in the Dragon Claw against a fairy that I can't do shit to. So, while I did get myself a position with that Lumberry, I now I'm kind of forced to switch and uh, try to save the Haxorus for later. So. This Whimsicott is a little bit of an issue. My best way to take care of it is going to be with my big meaty claws. So this is actually going to be a choice banded scissor here. Um, kind of nice to at least let people think I might potentially swords dance here. But as they go for the lead seed, it is kind of unfortunate, but it's mostly fine. Because I do threaten this thing, you know, with the bullet punch here. And even though I'm actually choice banned, I don't think a bullet punch kills this thing from full. So I would need my Terra at that point, but I also know that they're definitely going to switch. And also being, you know, leech seated, I should probably get my little metal bug ass out of here as quick as possible. So I go for the U-turn here. Uh, it just makes sense that they would just go right back into the Talon Flame. This thing can basically wall Scizor here. And the U-turn does a nice little chunk and also frees me, you know, from that leech seed. And also, I now get the switch momentum in bringing in whatever I want against the damn Talon Flame. So I decided to go into the Ambipom, and Ambipom does seem pretty important. I can do really good damage to a lot with these fake outs, and uh, I know it's not quite gonna be able to knock this thing out, but uh, I decided to just go for the fake out regardless, and uh, they're just gonna go right into the Torkoal. So Torkoal switch in here is kind of bittersweet. I'm fine with it mostly just because while it does come in and get that drought, I do in fact now just finish it off with that fake out. So. It's more than likely this thing is holding the Heat Rock, or at least I think we've seen that from the turns uh, before. So the Sun is going to stay up, and at this point, now they go into the Typhlosion. So when I see Typhlosion, especially on a team like this, I kind of imagine it's going to be Choice Scarf, and Choice Scarf eruptions in the Sun are insane. So I figure I should probably switch Amp upon that. I'm going to get outsped, plus I can't knock that thing out, as I decide to go into the Gastrodon here. So Gastrodon is in a spot where I kind of just planning to sack this thing. Uh, the fact that they still have the healthy Venusaur with the sun up, I'm not going to really find myself in too great a position with this uh, got, two grass types over there with the Whimsicott as well. So I just let him finish me off with two eruptions here. That does take care of the Gastronaut. I don't really know my calcs on an eruption in the sun of a Typhlosion, so I figure that's going to two hit KO, you know, regardless. But at this point, I'm like, okay, you know what? This thing locked into eruption is kind of fine with me because I could actually go into the Haxorus here, and ordinarily I know that I can live an eruption from a Choice Scarf Typhlosion here, even in the sun. So, as they go for that eruption, it actually ends up killing me, which is surprising, but it does tell me this thing is Choice Specs rather than Scarf. The Specs is kind of the only way that that eruption is able to kill me. So, while I was going to try to be able to get the Haxorus to do some nonsense, I now am forced to kind of uh, get on the back foot here and bring in the Ambipom. Well, Ambipom at least can, you know, go for a fake out, weaken this thing's eruption, uh, but I imagine they know that's probably gonna happen, so I instead try to go for the U-turn. It seems like they're making some pretty aggressive plays uh, in terms of switches at this point, so I can kind of use that to my advantage in trying to grab positions with these pivot moves. So as I go for the U-turn, they do actually bring back in the Whimsicott, and we have ourselves a, uh, quite a scary situation. So my best bet is to just go right back into the Scizor. It's kind of, again, my only real answer against this thing. I do have the Cryagonal in the back, uh, but Bullet Punch Scizor looks pretty nice here. So, as I bring this thing in, I'm not sure if they want to stay in here. They do have options to switch into things like the Lucario, um, the Talon Flame in general, but I'm just actually going to go for the Terra Steel Bullet Punch. That's actually going to cover for the Talon Flame coming in, seeing that this has been their switch into this, as it does come in at around half health. Um, the Terra Steel is just kind of a commit at this point that I know I don't really have anything else to kind of go for a Terra. I, I'm comfortable burning the Terra here on this Terra Steel because Choice Banded Technician boosted bullet punches with friggin Terra nonsense is quite scary. So I put the axe on my damn head looking menacing and this is going to be a kill on the bullet punch. So that takes care of Talonflame, knocks him down to four Mons left 
And with that thing gone, it is, uh, it's is—it's going to open up the game a little bit for me. So, now with the sun running out, they're actually going to end up going into the Lucario. They know that this thing can take a bullet punch and then threaten me back with a close combat. And I do not have a whole lot of uh, potential switch-ins to this. So, what I decide to do is I'm actually just going to save the Scizor. That thing looks really nice again against the Whimsicott. So, I do want to conserve that. Also, priority bullet punches are great against things like the Venusaur. So... As I bring in the, the, uh, the Luxray here, this is basically just a sack switch. A lot of the time, no Fuxray finds, finds themselves in a situation where I, I do just need to sack this thing. While I am going to activate my guts with the Flame Orb, um, I am just now going to get outsped, and an Earthquake uh, just is going to finish me off. So, this thing did go for the close combat, so at least we know it does have the minus one to defenses. And honestly, this Lucario is kind of a problem. So here's the plan. I know with a uh, minus defense, I can actually go into Ambipom here and the combination of a fake out uh, paired with something else should be pretty, pretty close to uh, be able to take care of it. Also, it is gonna bring it into range where then, you know, a bullet punch does its thing. So I can freely just go for the fake out here as they're actually gonna end up switching. They can serve the Lucario and they're gonna go right back into the Whimsicott. So here's the situation with the Whimsicott. While the fake out does a nice little chunk. I mainly, with the sun gone, I feel like I have the positioning to win this. Now, the only thing that is going to set me back is if this is actually secondary sun support. So, I go for the double hit here, thinking that maybe uh, they try to go for a sunny day or something like that, and then I can knock it out. But instead, they do make the nice play and just go for that encore, locks me into the fake out. Um, it just wasn't really worth me for me to switch here. I could have just gone into Scizor, uh, but it was kind of just a coin flip play there. So, this thing does have the leftovers, which is good to note also, but uh, obviously my ass is locked into fake out, so that is no bueno. And at least luckily I can go to Scizor, who can take any attack this wants to throw at me. I really, that was a misplay on my end, letting them encore me into that fake out. Um, but I do decide to go into the Scizor here, and they're actually going to end up switching out the Whimsicott. There is, this is honestly a pretty crazy mind game battle, as back comes the freaking Lucario. They probably expected the switch into Scizor, and now they have the position with the Lucario. And I am like, well, damn, I can't really afford to lose the Scizor here. The bullet punch is nice, and um, it's looking like I'm going to have to basically just sack the uh, Cryogonal. So I bring in the Snowflake on a sunny day. My ass is about to get melted. I mean, the sun is actually gone, but regardless, you know what I mean. So I just beat the shit out of me with that close combat. Takes care of the Snowflake, and uh, again, is going to drop the defenses there. So here's the good news. So Ambipom is actually in a position here where I know that they can't really go back into that Whimsicott. I'm not exactly sure what health it's sitting at, and while I imagine it probably can't come in on a fake out, they either stay in with Lucario here, or they're gonna make a switch. Now, I imagine they probably go Whimsicott, so I'm actually just gonna click the double click, or <laughs> click the double hit, and uh, double click that shit, and they actually do in fact go into the Typhlosion here. The Whimsicott likely cannot come in, and double hit is gonna do a nice little chunk to this Typhlosion, and noting from earlier, we know that this thing is not actually Choice Scarf. Ordinarily, this would be very bad for Ambipom, but with this thing, knowing it's choice specs, we actually do outspeed, and we're pissed off about those specs, so I just go for the knockoff. And now look at your glasses are on the freaking ground, Typhlosion, so that gets rid of that. And that's a huge late game threat out of the way. So with that thing gone, the bad news is now they can just go into Whimsicott for free. And this thing is sitting at about half health, and I know that uh, going for knockoff on my last turn, they could encore me here. So I'm actually just going to go ahead and end up switching into Scizor. We have not seen this thing set up the sun yet. I imagine if they have sunny day, they probably would have gone for it earlier, except they end up going for it now. Um, so the sunny day comes out, puts the sun back up for the potential Venusaur late game in the back, and at least here's the situation. So the sun's only gonna be up for five turns, and I know that I can get a bullet punch off here for free, and it is going to be able to take care of the Whimsicott before or after I get lead seated, which does suck. So. I now find myself in a spot where I have two Pokemon left and I need to uh, try to get rid of these Sun Turns to be able to beat the Venusaur. Now, of course, Scizor can kill uh, the Venusaur, or at least hit for some solid damage uh, with the Bullet Punch on the thing, and then Ambipom can fake out, but the one problem standing in our way is this damn Lucario. So, I do have some pretty big decisions to make here on this matchup. Now, Lucario is at full health, and I, of course, have only the Monkey in the back. So. I figure, you know, I'm locked into Bullet Punch, I am Terrid, and looking at the amount of Sun Turns left, they have three turns left, and as long as they run out of Sun Turns with that Venusaur, I could find myself a win here. So, I decide to stay in and go for the Bullet Punch, 
And while that does do a whole bunch of damage for me, it is gonna do it's gonna do a lot. And here's why it's kind of interesting. As they finish me off with the close combat, the Terra Steel kind of hose me at the end there, just because if I was uh, not full steel, that thing probably doesn't grab a kill there. And then Scizor clutches it out at least long enough to get rid of these next two sun turns. So at this point, all I have left is Ambipom and a Dream. So I of course have to bring in the monkey here. And so here it is. Now, with this thing's defense is dropped, there is two turns of sun left, and I really need the Ambipom to be able to outspeed the Venusaur. So I'm forced to go for the fake out, and here's the bad news. It actually kills the Lugario. While ordinarily that would be nice, grabbing a kill there is gonna allow the final turn of sun to be used by the Venusaur, and that is wildly unfortunate. So Venusaur finally comes in. The thing we've been afraid of this entire time, there's one turn of sun left. I cannot fake out. And all I can do here is hope that I can live and attack. But sadly, Monkey is frail and Solar Beam coming from a Venusaur does not feel like something I can really take. It uses that last turn of sun and is able to take care of the Ambipom. So that was honestly an extremely close match and it really came right down to it. There are so many factors, and it could have gone so many different ways, but honestly, that was pretty nuts with that late game sunny day, and the Lucario, like, literally, uh, it was unfortunate. But it's still, regardless, a super fun and very good game against a great player, and uh, I had a lot of fun with that one. All right, so for those of you who have stuck around, I do have a bonus match here, and we are going to run it back, baby. Let's go ahead and get into it. So with this team we're going up against, I do see the Smeargle on team preview, and I refuse to let this thing spore me and do some Smeargle shenanigans. So expecting that as a kind of just a spore potential sticky web lead, I'm actually just going to go Ambipom, and a fake out is going to do a ton of damage to the guy. And uh, I now at this point know that I'm going to be faster. I have to fake out just to break that thing's focus ash, and then I could actually end up knocking it out with a knockoff. So. The unused Focus Ash is laying on the ground, and that was kind of my only hard counter to the Smeargle lead, mostly just because I don't have anything that can switch in safely on a Spore, and it's gonna have a bad time. So, now this does allow them to freely switch into the Scizor here. I know that I can take at least one Bullet Punch, so I'm actually just gonna go for the U-turn for a tiny bit of chip damage, and go into something more hit, more fit to handle the, the big meaty claws. A lot of Scizor around today, but uh, I decided I'm actually just gonna go into the Bastiodon. I don't have a lot that wants to deal with Scizor, and other than, anything other than a close combat I know I can deal with. So, they actually end up going for the Swords Dance, I kind of expect that at this point, um, and I'm kind of fine with that, because again, I do have my Sturdy, I can knock myself down to that and then get two attacks off, essentially. So, it turns out they're actually going to go for the Baton Pass, and I'm like, oh, so, th so that's what we're doing, okay, I see you. Uh, they're actually going to Baton Pass into the Gallade here, so... You know, Gallade with a Swords Dance is pretty damn scary. I just take this opportunity to set up that Stealth Rock. Uh, they do have some things that aren't going to enjoy that in the back, so I wanted to prioritize getting that up. And also, I know I can take one attack from this thing for sure. It actually doesn't even knock me down to Sturdy with an Aqua Cutter. And that is going to allow me to get a, a little bit of a heavy slam. Not going to do a whole bunch of damage. But two of them is going to be pretty nice. I can cuss that berry, move faster, and knock this thing down into range where it should be pretty easy to deal with. So... While they do knock me out, you know, with that Night Slash, I was able to get up my Stealth Rock, put this thing into range where now uh, Ambipom threatens it with a Fake Out, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. I can go right back into the Pepto Bismal Ass Monkey, and we're looking extra pink here today. So, uh, of course, this thing is probably not going to want to waste the Sword Stance, but they're kind of forced to switch here, as they have seen the power of the Fake Out already. So, they just go right back into Scizor, honestly, kind of their only answer or at least real easy switch into a fake out, but slowly trying to whittle this thing down, it does take some stealth rock, some more chip from a fake out, and then I can grab myself a little bit more with another U-turn. Honestly, Ambipom is just such an infuriating Pokemon, especially when it just fake outs, it pivots out of there, gets saved for later, and you just know that it's gonna try to, it's gonna stop momentum a lot of the time uh, if you're going up against it. So, I actually decide to go into the Vicavolt here, and they're just gonna go for another sword stance. So. You know, knowing that a bullet punch is kind of their best threat here, I know I can take probably two of them because Vickavolt's the GOAT. So I'm actually going to go ahead and go for the agility here. As it turns out, they actually have quick attack. And that's kind of the only thing that stops this Vickavolt because with a sword stance boost, it also does get boosted by technician. Quick attack really kind of hose me here because while I set up the agility, I am now fast, but, you know, not faster than the quick attack. So they're able to finish me off with one more of those. 
as it wasn't really worth you know, me saving the Vikavolt here. That is an extremely fun Vikavolt set that uh, with agility can be pretty damn scary, but unfortunately not today. So at least now I can switch into whatever I like and I just decide to go into Blastoise. I know that uh, between Bullet Punch and Quick Attack, it has to go for a Quick Attack and even with the Swords Dance, I'm able to take it pretty nicely and then fire off a nice little Surf to take care of it. So with Scizoragon, that's feeling pretty good at least for Ambipom especially in the back because uh, they don't really have great switch-ins to it. So, they now take this opportunity to go into the Chinchino, and this is a type of fella that I feel like might go for a tidy up here and try to boost up, but instead they actually just go right for the Bullet Seed, and I stay in here with Blastoise just because it's in my best interest to try to get some chip with a Surf, and uh, that's going to put it into range where even if it does set up there, a fake out with Ambipom takes care of it. So, instead they just knock me out, which is kind of fine, Blastoise... Uh, does get taken care of, but I can just freely go back into the Ambi. And we actually have a pretty unique situation against the Chinchino here. While we're both one, uh, we're based 115 speed. We literally, the same exact speed, if they're running plus speed nature, um, the, we're going to have a speed tie. And that makes things quite interesting after a fake out. So, of course, I go for the fake out just to get that damage here. They don't have much that wants to switch into it. So they go back into the freaking weapon X and bop his ass with my weirdly utter shaped fingers and uh, that takes care of that so with that thing gone they actually get the free switch back into Chinchino knowing that I can no longer fake out they are likely gonna try to just go ahead and run a speed tie but also they probably know I can't knock this thing out in one hit so I do have to save the Ambipom and uh, it's kind of just again a good insurance policy to have in the back so I do actually have a plan and that is to switch into the Mandibuzz here as it actually works out pretty perfectly they end up going for the bullet seed here and that's going to, of course, activate my weak armor, give me a plus two speed boost, minus one to defense with every weak armor and every hit. So this thing with, <laughs> with the loaded dice is going to be able to hit me at least four times. But luckily I switch into a bullet seed. Honestly, I kind of just switched into this thing mostly as like a sack, but this thing's stats are going absolutely fucking nuts over here. I can live all the bullet seeds and then I'm going to be at plus six speed and uh, minus four defense if they get the four hits. So a lot of the time, Chinchino is gonna be a uh, technician set with loaded dice. Again, this thing is extremely scary. And my speed will not go any higher. I'm literally fast as hell out here. And I can now outspeed this thing and actually go for a dark pulse. The bad news is without being able to set up a you know, weakness policy or a uh, nasty plot, a dark pulse isn't quite able to take care of it. And now they can just go for the rock blast Activate the weak armor one more time for good measure, just for that extra defense drop. Um, but also, that does give me a freaking weakness policy. This thing, Mandibuzz, is going through severe stat changes currently. This thing is probably fatigued as hell at this point. And then I just die from the next Rock Blast, so I thought that was just kind of funny. Most importantly, however, I did get some chip with that Dark Pulse, and that is going to put it into range for Ambipom to do its thing. So... I just go right back into Ambipom because I feel like this guy is probably like this fucking monkey is the bane of my existence at this point. So I can just go for the fake out. Uh, no really reason to go for anything else because it's going to do a nice chunk to whatever they switch into. And also if they stay in, I want to ensure they uh, they just they go down there. They don't outspeed me. So I go for the fake out here. They actually end up bringing in the muck. Now they do have the Donphan in the back. Kind of surprised they didn't switch into Donphan here, but... Muck takes the fake out, and then a double hit is actually also going to be able to finish off the Muck. So that thing didn't uh, didn't get to come in and do any sh Mucky shenanigans, which is always good. And now at this point, they do have the two Mons left. So it's Donphan along with the Chinchino, and uh, they're going to go right back into Chinchino. They really want to try to outspeed the Ambipom here. As this thing comes in, it does live the Stealth Rock, which is unfortunate, but as looking at uh, freaking Bruxish, is my final mon left. I am definitely rolling for the speed tie here, and we do end up winning it, which is clutch as hell. I can go for that U-turn, and we win the coin flip, which essentially is uh, very nice. So in this situation, I was kind of fine with even had I lost it, because while if I did lose that speed tie, Ambipom goes down, but then I'm just able to freely go into the Scarf Bruxish, who is able to outspeed, and then I can just liquidation uh, not only the Chinchino, but also this freaking Don fan. So. I do have the Ambipom in the back, and I also have the coverage here with the Bruxish. So I can go for the liquidation here. Um, it is not going to be boosted by the freaking strong jaw, but a stab liquidation does put this thing uh, over half. It actually turns out this is going to be red card. So holds up the red card, makes me switch my ass on out of here, 
and that is going to force in, of course, the only other option left, which is the Ambipom. And uh, Ambipom has a chance to bring this shit home for us. As I come in, I uh, know that I can take one attack from this thing, as the Earthquake is going to do a solid chunk because I'm a frail-ass monkey, but I can go for another fake out here, and this thing is now in range to finish it off with a double hit, which is clutch as shit. It turns out, however, they actually have the Ice Shard, but Ambipom is not going down like that. I live it with 2 HP which is hilarious, and a double hit is able to finish off the Don fan. So, that's going to be the end of that match. I just thought Ambipom really, truly showed some value in this one, and uh, I had to, had to toss one more at you. So, thank you guys very much for watching the video. I know this was an extra long one, but uh, let me know if you do enjoy, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out.